Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. I'll tell you what, I'm dedicated. I am not a morning person. We're inside of the Manti greenhouse in the middle of winter and it's early morning. I am not a morning person, but I just wanted to come out and give you some raw data. How does the greenhouse perform really in the worst case scenario? Um, outside it's only 17 degrees. I mean, that's cold, don't get me wrong, but we've, we've had colder times. Um, but we're coming on the heels of multiple days of cloud cover. So what that means is most of our heating mechanisms is thermal mass. We have the greenhouse, which in the wintertime, the sun comes directly in and it lights up the whole wall. So the, all that heat, all that BTU from the day is stored in the soil, in our little planter box stem wall, in the planter box itself. Um, we have 2,000 gallons of water and in the back wall. So all of that retains heat. But over the last few days, because there's no sun, the, the greenhouse is fine. It warms up and, and stays at a temperature that's okay for the plants, but it doesn't store up heat for the nighttime. So this is the coldest our greenhouse has ever been. Without any power, without any propane, we're at about 40 degrees on the inside. Um, my goal is around 45. So that's the conversation I want to have today. Um, we're not exactly where we want to be. However, 40 is still good to sustain growth with all of our plants, especially our tropics. Um, this, this guy right here is kind of my gauge. How are we doing? How is the greenhouse performing? Are we keeping the tropics alive? Because if we keep the tropics alive, all the other things will do great. Like right now, seriously, peppers love this weather. I think our peppers are doing better now than in the summertime. A little bit of cold and they don't get too high of temperature. So, you know, other, other plants like your carrots, uh, your cabbages, your broccoli, I mean, they're, they're just thriving in here. Some of the other things are, I would just say doing okay. So the banana, which again is kind of just a gauge, um, the leaves that used to grow four feet in a week, uh, they're still growing. I don't know if you can see. Let me come back over here. There we go. So that's a new banana leaf that's just emerged over the last couple weeks, probably a week and a half. So I'm okay with that because we still have growth. The plants are still happy, but 40 degrees is not my optimal. And so if you're into the idea of being a prepper and trying to be off grid, um, then you wanna have redundancies. And we do have redundancies. The easiest thing for me is to just walk over here to one of those redundancies, which is a propane heater. Um, I had the pilot's light, pilot lights off last night. I wanted it completely shut down. So the coldest part of the morning, the coldest part of the greenhouse is right now. So I turned the, green, the pilot light on just barely. And you know, we can set this heater. It's just a simple Mr. Mr. Heater. Um, kind of like a garage heater that you just set in and it just radiates the heat. This thing actually works phenomenal. Um, you can go store you a 250, 500 gallon thing of propane and have a ton of fuel storage. So even if the grid was down, you would have access easily for, you know, probably a couple of winters, but it still is expensive. We have three of these in the greenhouse. We have one on the very end, uh, right when you walk in. And then we have one in the middle where we were just at by the tropics. And then we have one on the very, very back wall. So I can set this at like a one scenario or even just a little bit less than one degrees and, and it, it'll set at about 42 to 45 if I wanted to. So if this is running, it's taking a third a gallon of propane an hour. So if I have all three of these on, 
um, I'm actually expending one gallon an hour. And I think it would definitely get the greenhouse up to 45 if I put on the very, very lowest, even below the lowest setting of one. Um, you know, we're probably still going to run maybe three hours. So maybe three gallons of propane. Um, that's kind of a lot if you don't have continual propane. And again, why do I keep talking about that? Nate, we have propane. Nate, we have natural gas. Nate, you, you can turn the electric heaters on if you want. Um, there's a really good book that um, I recommend anyone to read by Ted Koppel called Lights Out. And he talks about the inevitability of basically of a, an attack on our power grid. Now, when he wrote that about what, 10 years ago, that kind of seems stupid to even think about. But so we had like an early instance a couple of years ago, several years ago in California where someone did just that. They went and attacked the power grid over in California and it literally could have melted down the grid that served Silicon Valley. Well, luckily that was averted, but the way that that attack was, was happening, they figured that was done by maybe not a state actor, but by definitely by somebody with some intelligence, some, some, some type of trained personnel, people that knew what they're doing, right? Well, this year, uh, well, I guess I should say last year, a couple days ago in 2023, we've had different attacks on the power grid in America. Um, on the East Coast, they experienced some, and you know, there's just a lot of weird things going on. And so for me, thinking about these contingencies, maybe having your head down in the rabbit hole a little bit, is something that I'm trying to force my brain to do. It's not dwelling on the negative at all. But if you believe that all is well, you're not going to prepare yourself for what could happen. So again, this greenhouse and the point of it is how can it perform without any of that, right? I mean, if you just take what happened yesterday, where we have literally uh, 5,000 flights grounded because of a computer glitch. I mean, commercial flights in America grounded because what they say is a computer glitch. Later, the president came out and said that they couldn't rule out a cyber attack, even though Pete Buttigieg <laughs> said that it was not a cyber attack. President Biden says it couldn't be ruled out. So do we know what's going on? Uh, it's interesting because Canada, they had a similar um, glitch, if you will, happen on their aviation systems as well. Uh, to me, that doesn't seem like a software glitch in America's software only. Why is it happening in Canada as well, right? So this greenhouse is trying to be an answer to those questions. We don't want to be left just having all of our beautiful tropics, having our tangelo, having these things uh, die just because we're relying upon the government to tell us the truth or tell us lies if we're vulnerable to having our way of life disrupted. So I will make another video of another redundancy that I'm going to do for, um, for power. So I, li I love the idea. <sighs> the grapefruit's actually doing pretty good. Again, this was a smaller plant, but I mean, it's, it is doing just fine. It's still growing. It's slow growing right now, but um, we put it in later in the later in the summer because again we got done in July so we were getting plants kind of late in the season and it still grew about eight inches and it's doing fine in the winter so far so I'm happy but I want a little bit more so even though I just turned on the heater over here and that can warm things up really quick um, I'm going to be looking at see it's already warmed it up two degrees now, the insulation factor, you can see the, the frost from the outside melting. You can hear the dripping, the condensation, that's fine. Um, 
a, another scenario that I'm going to look at is I'm gonna get one of those cylinder stoves, those barrel stoves, so that in a true situation, let's say that I had ran out my propane one winter and we have some kind of a disruption that lasts to the next winter. So if the propane is gone and we can't fill it up, hopefully that's extremely unlikely, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one of those cylinder stoves we put right here, and then you actually uh, get a piece of plywood and have your four inch flue go right out the window. So the plywood will cover the window. They have some sheeting that you put in, and then your, your four inch flue goes out and then straight up. And then in a situation, I probably wouldn't build a fire today, but if I was getting a little bit nervous, I could wake up in the night and just build a fire on each end and, and give it some extra heat. Now, again, this is only on worst case scenario days like this, where we've had several days where we've just had cloud cover. So our, our barrels, all of our thermal mass in a worst case scenario, multiple days of no sun, it's not, I mean, it's still keeping this place warm. We're still 40 degrees, even though it's freezing outside. So it's still doing what it's supposed to do. But if I want it to do a little bit more, I love the idea the most of having maybe two of those cylinder stoves on each end, because then I can control firewood. If I get off my butt and have my four boys get off their butts, we go up, cut down a tree, split some wood, have firewood ready for, for the winter, enough for our house and the greenhouse. Sure. Plus the carbon. I mean, everybody's worried about all these carbon emissions. Do you know what carbon will do to this greenhouse? It's like, it's like giving it a sugar candy cane. It's just going to love it. It's the carbon with the trees. I don't know. It seems like the whole world's forgot about photosynthesis. I'll, I'll stop my rant, but the carbon would be phenomenal for the plants. I'd be fertilizing them while heating them. So anyway, that's my ramblings. If the video is incoherent, it's early. You get what you pay for. <laughs> um, I'm happy. I actually love seeing this, that the worst case scenario, which is multiple days, and it's still performing. Um, we're above 40 now because I've turned that on. I'm probably gonna turn my propane heater off because realistically the sun will come out. Yeah, we're, we're at 42 already. The sun will come out here in a couple of hours. And even with cloud cover, we'll go from 40 to, you know, probably 50 degrees very quickly, but it'll probably only warm up into the 60s if the cloud cover continues. If the sun comes out, Again, we've had way colder days than 17 degrees that we are now. Uh, we've been down to zero, and we've been, we were at, I think, 48 or 50 because everything was charged. But I just want to be realistic on what this does and doesn't do. I'm happy with it. Those are the numbers. Uh, thanks for watching. Out.